in the studio to join the Jesus Band. One thing we've learned the past few minutes, the past few hours being here together is that Christians can have a lot of fun, and Christians are peculiar people. That's why we do this next song. It's called Sunday Song, but it, what it really means is get out every day and share the love of the Lord. Sunday Song. My name's Ralph Hunt, and I have a special offer from Bob and the Good News Circle for you, if you'll just write and let us hear from you. 
Bob has written a book called What a Way to Go. And if you'll write to us, the Good News Circle, at Post Office Box 752, Niles, Michigan, 49120, we'll send you free and postage paid a copy of this book, What a Way to Go. It tells kind of a story of a guide for God's plan for your life. And if you would like to know what he has to say to the world today and to you personally, we invite you to write to us and to get your free copy of What a Way to Go by Bob Laurent. That address again, Good News Circle, Post Office Box 752, Niles, Michigan, 49120. That's the Good News Circle, Post Office Box 752, Niles, Michigan, zip code 49120. Thank you. Thanks, Ralph. We're happy to have with us today a friend who now is a good friend that didn't take very long, this Karen Morrison, who, whose life really took off at age 19. Something pretty fantastic started to happen to her. It all started in Niagara Falls when, at that very young age, uh, she found out that there was a world watching. Mm -hmm. And maybe she'd like to share with you and like to tell you exactly who she is. Karen. Okay, well, the pageant was, is held in Ni Niagara Falls, and there's 50 girls from 50 states that come to compete. And then we also hold the Miss Universe pageant in the Philippines. Well, it was in the Philippines my year. So it's a year of traveling for 365 days almost, and I visited about 21 countries, and it was exciting. It was a really good time. Did you really think that, uh, that it would happen to you? Miss USA, I mean, no. not every day do I get a chance to talk to Miss USA. Well, it was... I entered the first year and I didn't win, Miss mm -hmm. Illinois that is, and the second year I got very lucky and the very Lord allowed lucky. it to happen, you know, the USA to happen. I've so. got to admit, when I first knew that I had a chance to talk to you, uh, I felt a little bit anxious about it. I wondered, you know, about it. Then I realized that when I was your age, you were only 14, and I'm not afraid of a 14-year-old kid. Uh -huh. <laughs> Lots been happening to her. We've got some slides to show that that uh, okay. I'd like for you to see, and Karen's going to describe it and tell you exactly okay. what was going on at that moment. Well, this is what, at the beginning of the show, when we introduce ourselves, it's called the Parade of uh, States, and I'm in the middle there with the red, white, and blue flag. Uncle Sam had on. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's a cute outfit. Mom sewed that for you? So, no, huh? I borrowed it. <laughs> okay, what have we got here? So, well, this is uh, when we introduce ourselves and introduce our states and say something to the mayor of uh, Niagara Falls. Were you nervous there? And yeah, I know that more man. nervous here. That's Bert Parks. That's Bob Barker. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and those are the uh, four girls who were runner-ups to me there. And this is the final question. They always ask that one question at the end. Mm. Did you get the answer right? Uh, yeah, I guess There's I did. There's the girl that answered it right the year before. All right. Uh, that's Amanda Jones in the blue, and I just won. It just happened she was from Illinois the year before, so we both won uh, two years in a row. Looks like you crushed her. Now this is uh, that's after you won. I won. Right, and Boy, um, Bob Barker was asking me just a few questions, personal questions about my background, and the next one's where I'm taking off. <laughs> oh. They always throw you down the runway. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a walk. Look so. at those people. Do you remember seeing people's faces? No. You weren't aware of that? I don't remember this. Was this I the high moment of your life right here? No. Yeah. No, uh-uh. That, that wasn't, but that had to be a pretty exciting time. It was very exciting. Now this is... This is the following year uh, yeah. when I gave the title up. You have it for one year, so this was the... Was it I fun to give it up? Home. Yeah, it was nice. I was now, tired. Now who's this here? I don't know her. <laughs> <laughs> that is ex Miss USA. Yeah. We went to Sorry. the Miss Universe pageant in the Philippines. And I asked you, was that one moment when you gave, you know, the, uh, the walk up and down and all the pictures flashed. Was that the most exciting moment of your life? And you said no. No. Uh, I think you know what I'm driving uh -huh. at. What, what there happened There was an, a moment about 10 months ago that was even more exciting, and that's when I accepted Christ. I was, I was asked to come, I was modeling in New York City, and I was asked to come back to um, St. Charles, Illinois, mm -hmm. where I live, and do the Miss Illinois pageant. And they said, well, Karen, you be careful, because there's a Christian who's the MC. So I says, Watch oh, don't worry, I'm, I'm okay, I'm a, I'm a Christian, and um, so I went in there, and we uh, started talking, and I liked Jim, and as it turned out, he asked me one day, what is a Christian? And I, I says, a person who goes to church on Sunday, who gives 10%, who is a good person, and I never, you know, included in you have to have a personal acceptance of Jesus Christ that we are sinful and separated from God and that 
uh, he has a plan for our lives and that we are to accept him and then we will be with him someday. These things I was leaving out, mm -hmm. the important things. And he, he heard you leave them out? He heard me leave them out. So mm -hmm. what did he do? So he brought him back in. <laughs> <laughs> What's that one? If you stand, he stands at the door, the door and, knocks. and knocks. If you answer and let him in, he'll And you answered the door. Mm -hmm. And what happened to your life? It completely changed. Um, my ideas on life changed. I was very materialistic because you're with, at the Waldorf, you're, yeah, um, sure. you know, clothes, car, all these things. Meeting the big names. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you meet a lot of very famous people. And I find them to be very unhappy. I do. And uh, they don't have Christ. And that's the whole difference right there. Well, you are different. So. You really are. We've had so much fun just getting to know each other today. and finding out what makes you tick. And I know it is the Lord. And that's why your so. smile's there. But, you know, some, some people be, will be watching this now. And especially some girls will think, you know, do I have to look mm. like she looks to be a Christian? Uh, and can you maybe in closing share? They're probably not saying that. What are you saying? <laughs> I think they probably are. <laughs> no, the thing is, um, that's, that's the whole thing. You don't have to be any, anybody. You really don't. Um, Jesus loves us all as we are. And he accepts all. Our, a little boy said to me one time, well, I can't pray and ask him to forgive me because I've done so much wrong. And these are the kind of, that's not true. God he forgives, forgives anyone everybody and, and loves anybody. anyone, regardless of what you look like. Uh, Karen Morrison, uh, a life changed through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord Jesus now is the one that she serves. She travels the country sharing his love, and that's, that's what's exciting to her. We're glad you got to meet her. I'm proud that I got to meet her because of who she stands for. Miss Karen Morrison, Miss USA. God bless you, Karen. Thank you. Turn with me right now, if you will, into your Bibles to Romans, the seventh chapter, starting with the 14th verse. It says this, We know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not know what I am doing. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in my sinful nature. I have a reason that I read that to you out of all the scriptures I could have picked. There's only one way to break away from a predicament like that. The Apostle Paul found himself with his back against the wall, not knowing where to turn. It's a common problem that every human being runs into. The one way to get away, it's called heaven. Through the shed blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, to say yes to that is to be there.
We have got the happiest TV crowd in here today. I'm not even going to want to leave. There are people all over here smiling. Is this the first time you've ever been on TV? Hmm? Some of you? There's a girl sitting right down here in the front row that has a button on it, an orange button that doesn't go at all with her red outfit. And it says, it says, Jesus changed my life. And really, that's exactly where we're coming from. That's why we've sung these songs. That's why we're doing this program today. Is because the Lord Jesus has changed our lives. I read today in the front page of the newspaper here in town, um, the title, the headline said, said, Recession Fades, Hope Prevails. And I thought, boy, this is going to be a great article. I got one or two paragraphs down and it said, but still there are three things that don't seem to end in this country and they're all too familiar a problem. It's something that the paper said we all worry about all the time. It said, number one, unemployment, number two, inflation, and number three, the energy crisis. I started thinking, I haven't thought about any one of those three things recently. And when you come right down to it, I'm not sure if that is the big problem on America's heart today. For example, a couple of months ago, I got a phone call at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning from a guy I'd known years ago, and he started crying and telling me that, Bob, he said, I'm having a trouble, a lot of problems. He said, I'm a homosexual. He said, and I haven't admitted that to many people. And that night, he said, I want to change. He said, I, I don't know how to do it. In fact, I don't think God can forgive me. He said, I just, I'm too far down to come back up. Believe me, that night, the big problem on that kid's heart was not unemployment. And I got a phone call just... Uh, a little bit later from a man uh, who I'd met just, just a little bit ago down at a crusade we had in Indiana, a uh, janitor there at the church who told me, Bobby said, I just, I don't know what I'm going to do. My family's broken up. My wife, she doesn't love me anymore. My children don't want to see me anymore. And again, I heard some tears from that man. And he said, you know, I want to change. And believe me, that night he didn't have on his heart inflation. Instead, he had something deep inside him that needed to come out and he needed answers to his problem. I talked to a girl just a couple of days ago at a youth conference who said, Bob, she said, I, I am so involved in a web of sex and drugs that I really don't think that I can come out of it. She said, I need to change. I've got problems, uh, but I don't know if I can make it. Believe me, that night she wasn't thinking about the energy crisis. That guy and that girl and that other fella, they all had one problem in common. That problem is the same one I've got. Same one you've got. Impossible. No, it is. Ephesians 2.3 says, I am by nature a child of wrath. It may not sound good to you, but I happen to know me better than you know me. And we're sitting here right now in this audience, and we're dressed to the hilt, and we look so good and so innocent and pure, but I know better than that. And if any of you got to know me better, you know that there's something deep within me. That's why we read Romans 7 tonight. That's why Paul said, my back's against the wall. Every time I want to do something good, I wind up doing exactly what I didn't want to do. Paul said, there must be something deep within me making me act like that. He said, sure enough, it's my old sinful nature. Now, how do you get beyond that? Philosophers call it the, the, the moral error. Psychologists call it the uh, deviant behavior. Sociologists call it cultural lag. You might call it your hang-ups or your own personal character flaws. God calls it sin, believe me. And it's time we started talking about it again. It's probably what you're involved in now. And I'm not saying that you're a sinner just because you smoke, drink, cuss, or chew, or run around with boys that do. I'm saying that just happens to be a problem we've got. You know, Jesus gave us victory over that. And every time I talk to somebody who's having trouble, I wind up telling them, hey, you, you don't have to say God can't forgive you. He forgave me. And I probably had problems worse than yours. At least to me, they were. You wonder sometimes how I can, how you can be born again, how you can get a fresh start, how it can happen to you. Let me tell you how much the Lord loves you. The Bible says that a little child shall lead them. And I've got a little child. I've got a little boy that I love very much, a little boy that likes to have birthday parties. And you know why he likes parties? Because he likes presents. One day last year, he had his birthday party, and we had about 12 little kids over to the house. And you know who had to play clown? It was me. And I had to be the one to keep those little rugrats entertained for a couple of hours. And I got to where I couldn't do it anymore. So I said, OK, let's open up the presents. And now all these kids started dumping presents on my little son's lap until he couldn't hold anymore. And he was just in little dog heaven. That night when I put him to bed, I, I knew that he'd had overkill of presents. So I looked down at him and I said, Christopher, I said, you think everybody really loves you a lot, don't you? And he said, yep. I said, you think Grandma and Grandpa love you a lot, don't you? He said, yep. And I said, you think I love you a lot, don't you, Chris? And he said, yep. And I thought, well, I'll just tease him and bring him down from this cloud so he doesn't think every day's a birthday like that. So I said, little man, he said, what, Daddy? I said, I don't love you. I don't love you at all. And he looked at me and I saw his eyes get bigger in the dark. And all of a sudden, he blurted out, oh, yes, you do. And I said, how do you know I do? He said, because you gave me a present, too. 
I said, yeah, that's right. How else do you know I do? He said, cause you, cause you wrestle with me, dad. And I said, yeah, smarty pants, how else do you know? He said, cause, cause when I fall down, you always pick me up. And I thought, stop right there, kid. That's enough. All I need is three points. I never heard anything so beautiful. That's exactly the re relationship I have with my Lord, and it's the same one you can have. Sitting here in the TV, sitting here in the studio, st sitting in your living room out there in the TV audience, the Lord loves you, and He loves you a lot. He loves you so much, He gave you a present. And He can come to you right now, and He can say, Hey, Jackie, hey, Sue, hey, Bill, I don't love you. I don't love you at all. And you'd have to look at Him and say, Oh, yes, you do. Because, God, you gave me a present. Nobody ever died for me. And yet the great good news of the gospel is that the Lord Jesus Christ became, became a man. He became someone we could reach out and touch. That's the present from God. God himself broke through to Bethlehem with the greatest Valentine's card that was ever signed. And he signed it in blood. The Lord Jesus, given for me, given for you. There is hope. Believe me. Recession will fade, but it might come back again. But hope will prevail because of the Lord. And you know what's really good to know? And I want you to get this. Get it into your spirit that God wrestles with you, that he's not some kind of a supernatural tease that sits up on a cloud and when, you're, when you start to have fun, he looks down at you and says, naughty, naughty. No way, he comes all the way down. He comes further than halfway down, meets you on the common ground of the death and resurrection of his son, and then he wrestles with you, and he plays with you, and he touches you, and he loves you. The Lord I have is the kind of Lord that, that I know is there. Thomas said, prove to me who you are. And Jesus reached out his hand and Thomas put, the, put his fingers in the nail prints of my Lord Jesus. And then Thomas said, my Lord, my God. And that's the same God that sticks closer to me and to you than a brother. That's how I know I'm loved. Because he gave me a present. Because he wrestles with me. But most of all in my life, because when I fall down, he picks me up. You don't pick me up. And I don't pick myself up. But God's there to pick me up. And probably that's the most difficult thing for us to admit. What those three people I shared with you earlier told me. Bob, I need help. The big question's not about where am I going to get a job. Not about how am I going to pay the cost of living index. Not about, not about how am I going to get enough energy to run my car. Really, the big question. Who am I? Help me out. Somebody tell me why I'm alive today. I'll tell you why you're alive. Because God created you. And if God created you, he can, he can fill you up. You know what you need? It's something that's being talked a lot about today. Being born again. And that starts on a personal level. That's when you get out of the way and the Lord Jesus Christ moves into your life. And sitting here right now, here, at home, wherever you are, God will do that to you. If you allow him. If you say, okay, not I who live anymore, but Jesus come and live inside me. Take away my pride, my problems. Come on inside me and take up residence in my life. You heard Miss USA earlier say that she, the verse that reached her was Jesus talking in Revelation 3.20. I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens up that door, I will come into him. And the Lord Jesus will come in and he'll live with you forever. And you don't have to worry about him hiding in the attic of your life. He moves right into the living room. And when you give your life to Jesus, then he puts your name into his book of life in unerasable bond. And you know that you're loved forever. How do you know God loves you? I'll tell you how. He gave you a present. That's how. Because he wrestles with you. He gets right down on the carpet with you. And he lets you know that you're, he's the best friend you're ever going to have. But most of all, and you've got to admit you've fallen down, he picks you up when you do. That's why I know I'm loved. What about you? Maybe today's the time you're going to make your decision. If so, then let the greatest lover in the universe invade your life, the Lord Jesus Christ, today. Write today for your copy of Bob Lorentz's book, What a Way to Go. That address again, Good News Circle, Post Office Box 752, Niles, Michigan. That's the Good News Circle, Post Office Box 752, Niles, Michigan, zip code 49120. My name is Ralph Hunt, and on behalf of Bob and the entire team, thank you for tuning in. God bless you. Loving one another, Love
becomes our own. By dying on Mount Calvary, we love not as the world does, but in Him. Growing together. Now let's sing it together. Giving